All right, so today I'm going to go over the touched event. And the touched event happens when two parts collide, when they touch. So my character has a bunch of parts in it, torso, arms, legs, head, things like that. And these are parts that have the touched event connected to a function, boom, that makes it do stuff. So this one gives me super speed, super jump, cool beans. That one over there is health. So when I get hurt by the zombie, see that? I'm down to yellow. Uh, there we go. Like, see, hit the orange. Now I'm at orange. I'm going to go here, get that red thing. Boom, got the red thing. Now my health bar went away because I'm 100%. I'm going to jump this green cloud, make the zombie go through it. Boom, he's dead. The green cloud is a kill cloud. Ooh. Oof. All right, so let's go ahead and get a fresh world. Do those three examples, and then you'll have a pretty good understanding of how touched events uh, work, and you could use them in your game. All right, so here's a fresh world. Let's start out with our death cloud. And I'll go ahead and put a part right here. And we'll just make it a block. Here we go. We're going to add smoke to it, right? So that part right here, we'll say SM for smoke. There we go. We got some smoke coming out. Maybe make that smoke green. And color green. Cool. Let's make that part a little bigger. Probably should have done that before I made the cloud so big. There we go. I don't want to make it too big. Cool. And now let's make that invisible and then turn can collide off. Oh, and let's rename it. Let's rename it to cloud. All right. And then we'll go down here to transparency in the part, in the cloud part. Transparency one. Now it's invisible, but we can still bump into it. So let's turn can collide off and then that would make it fall through the ground because the base plate wouldn't hold it. So now we have to anchor it. So now we got those three things. Boom. We have a part that we can get the touched event connected to. All right. So let's get that cloud, hit the plus sign, add a script. Let's call this damage. Right. And then we'll make that a little bigger so you can see it. Let's get a reference to the part, local part script dot parent, right? So here's my script damage. The parent is the cloud, which is a part, right? That's not actually the smoke. We're, we're being tricky there. I'm gonna do local function on touch other part. All right, so we did functions before, but remember we have to call the function and then we have these parameters. This parameter, the other part, is going to be the part touching your part, right? So we have two parts. We have the part with the code, and then we have the other part touching it. So if I get my part and I do this, see that little lightning bolt? That means it's an event. I do this touched, colon, connect. I put the function name here. I don't have to pass in the parameters like a typical call uh, to a function. It's going to know, hey, I need to call this function. I'm a touched event, so I am going to pass in that other part. You don't have to do it. Good thing, too, because it would be hard to try and figure out what touched that part. Right? Roblox does that for you. Let's go ahead and print out. We'll say print um, other part equals. Oh, my gosh. There we go. Uh, other part. Let's see what we got. Boom. Play. And where's our little... Our little green cloud, there it is. Oh, and we don't have the window output. Look at that. We got a whole bunch of other parts being spewed out right here. If we can, cl we'll clear this so we can do it again. And we'll go ahead and touch it. Boom, look at that. Lots and lots of events fired. The right foot, the handle, right? That's actually for my hair. And then um, lower torso, you get the idea. Right. So now that we know that we have these parts, let's take a look at our workspace workspace, right? Go to workspace, go to your character. Mine's SimTech game developer 13. And then look at some of these parts like the right foot, right? Here's my right foot. Look at the parent of that part. That is my character, right? The parent of the foot or the head or the torso is the character. It's not like in uh, real life where the foot's connected to the leg and the leg's connected to the hip. It's all on the first level, right? It's called a first child. Remember that, first child. So we go up here, 
Now we want to go down to humanoid. Humanoid is a special object in Roblox that does cool things like controls you know, how much health you have, maximum health, how, how fast you move. Let's go down to, eh, let's see, max health and health. So health is 100 here, max health is 100, so we're at full health. What happens if I make it zero? Oh, I died, right? I have no health. That's the humanoid that does that. That's what we need. We need our humanoid. So let's turn this off. Let's go to our on touch, right? And let's see if we can get a variable for the humanoid and stuff it with the stuff it, stuff in the humanoid uh, uh, part, right? So I'll say other part. That's my foot. The parent is the character. Uh, parent is the character. I need the first child that's a humanoid. If I do this and it doesn't exist, I'm going to get an error. So what I need to do is use this special method called find first child, and then I'll pass in humanoid here. If I find it, it gets stuffed into humanoid over here. If I don't find it, this becomes nil. And that's cool because then we can do an if statement. We can say if hum then because nil is considered false. So if false, then, well, we'll just skip right on out of this touched event. So if I hit a ball on, onto the part, the parent is going to be the workspace or something similar. It's not going to have a first child that's a humanoid. We don't want to fire anything. But if it is a character, this is going to have a value. We could say, well, we could do the health equals zero, right? We saw that killed you. Or this is the more preferred method, colon take damage 100. So you got to put it in, in these uh, parentheses there. All right, let's see what we got. Let's go in here. Boom. Hit play. There's my cloud. Oh, look at that. Right? We have a death cloud. Cool beans. All right, let's go ahead and build our health thing now. Right? A little health drink. I made a little cylinder to kind of look like a can. Right? With my superior artwork. Let's go to cylinder here. Right? Collisions are off, so when I rotate it, it'll go in the floor a little bit. There we go. Move it up out of the floor. Let's call it health. Call it like health pickup if you want, as long as it makes sense and you can find it. Hit the color, the brick color, red. Let me change the size to 1.8 comma and 0.8. That's a pretty good size. We are going to turn can collide off. We don't want to, we don't want to stop or anything like that. Just pick it up and then we're going to anchor it so it doesn't fall. All right. Did we miss anything? I don't think we did. Let's go to health, hit the plus, add a script, right? Let's call this, uh, we'll call it health, right? That's fine. Go ahead and look at your damage. Double click on damage or select it up here. I'm going to get rid of this. Copy the damage script. Copy the whole script, control C, go to health, paste it. Look at that. The part's going to be the same, script.parent. We're going to need an on touch, on touch function. We're going to need to connect it. In here, oh, we need that. We need the humanoid because the humanoid is for health, right? And then here, let's just change, make it a dot. If you're asking yourself how to know, how do you know if it's a dot or a colon? That's a pain. You're just going to have to get good at it over time. Uh, I hate it, um, but you get used to it. All right, so we have our health, and then we want to make ourselves maximum health. So what I'm going to do is say health equals dot, hum dot, max, oh my gosh, max health. Cool. That was a little rough, but um, we got there. All right, and now I only want it to be effective one time. So after we touch it, I'm going to destroy it. It's going to be gone, right? Remember, that's how you destroy a part. And you can do a model like that too. Let's go ahead and play it. Oh, we need a zombie because we're not hurt. Let's do that. Stop. We got to get some way to hurt us. Something. Oh, we shouldn't have made it a kill brick. We should have made it like half kill or something. That's fine. 
Let's call this Grueling Zombie here. Boom, Grueling Zombie. Base plate. There we go. Don't don't let him drink your drink because it will it will work on him too. Uh, please review. Yeah, we know there's scripts there. And now we'll play it. Now we can get hurt, and now we can drink our drink. Here he comes. Ah, I don't get the drink. There. So I'm hurt, right? I'm yellow. All right. Let's make sure we don't have any errors. Output. Looking good. Looking good. We only get one. Right? That's just the way I designed it. So now I'm going to do the power up. I'm going to make that so that it comes back. Right? I probably should have done that with the health. But that's a little trickier because we're going to introduce the debounce. Right? The debounce prevents something from firing too many times. I'll just go to home here. And what are we going to do? A sphere? Sure. Let's do a sphere. Make a yellow. New yeller. And then I'm going to make it neon. Right? And then we'll make it small. Maybe one by one by one. Cool. Let's uh, do can collide. We'll turn that off. And then anchored on. I think I put some like particles or something in here too. Oh, let's rename it. Let's rename this to power up. Power up. And then if you know how to use the particle emitter, let's do particle. Particle emitter. Boom. Have some particles there. We can change the color. Oh, select particle emitter. Change the color. And you can do gradients. You can do a lot of stuff with this. I'm just going to do a, a quick uh, particle emitter there. Just to introduce some new things. All right, so lifetime. I'm going to shorten that down to make maybe one to two seconds. All right, so it's a variable number between one and two seconds. Rate, that's fine. Uh, speed, maybe a little slower. Maybe like two. And then we need the angle to change. Size is pretty big too. Where's our angle? Um, there it is, spread angle, right? So I think 360 and 360. So if you do like 360 on one and you keep the other one zero, uh, see that it, it, it's like a, this is like a wheel like that. And then if you have two 360s, it becomes a, it becomes a, like a sphere. All right, let's make those, let's make the size of that smaller, the particles themselves. Size, make that like, I don't know, 0.3. Cool. That's pretty good. It's going to be less when we play the game. I don't know why it does that. All right, so we got our particle emitter. We got our little part. Let's get a plus sign, add a script. Let's call this power up or call this uh, super strength. Or, oh, let's we'll do power up. Cool. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's go to our damage, right? That's the simplest one. I'll copy this again. I'm going to go to my power up. Paste it. Control V. And now we're going to do something called a debounce. I'm going to say can touch. True. Right? So we have the part, just like before. We're going to have this can touch Boolean variable set to true. We're going to get the humanoid, right? The part is going to be connected to the on touch when it gets touched. This will fire. The other part will be in it. We'll get the humanoid with this, right? We'll get down here. We want to make sure the humanoid exists and can touch is true, right? When we get in here, we are going to set can touch to be false. So now nobody else can use this until we set it to true again. So what we'll do is we'll take damage. Oh, we want to change that, right? We're going to make power instead of Instead of health, humanoids also have something called walk speed, right? And it's normally 16. Let's make it 50, right? And then humanoids also have something called jump power. That's normally 50. Let's make a 150. And then in order for jump power to be used, you have to have use jump power to be set to true. Right, that's kind of new. That messed up one of my videos that were, were kind of old. All right, and then we're going to wait 10 seconds, right? And now, now this is false, right? All this is false. We're waiting 10 seconds. Nobody can use this script because this is false. Humanoid has to exist and, and can touch has to be true. It's not until 
we go like that, right? All right, 10 seconds goes by. We can do can touch again. We're going to set that back to 16. That's the normal value. And then we're going to go jump power is 50, right? And I'll show you that when we're playing it, when we're testing it out. So this should go away. Oh, let's make it invisible too, right? So the part transparency will equal one after we touch it. So it disappears and then it's going to reappear when we make the transparency zero, which is fully opaque. Cool beans. All right. I'll make this a little smaller, fit it all in. So you guys can copy it. There you go. All right. Let's go ahead and play it. Let's put the view output window so we can see if there's any errors. Uh, don't touch my ball there. Cool. So I got my powers. Let's see if it comes back. Oh, look, we got to turn the particle emitters off too. Particles were still going. Cool beans, it's working. So let's take a look at that humanoid here. Let's get the zombie to go through the death cloud. There. All right. Go to your workspace and your, your player. Go to humanoid. If you scroll down, you are going to see the walk speed is normally 16. We set it like that, but you can see what it is when it starts up. That will be the default value. And then here's our jump stuff too. So we have the jump power and the use jump power. If this is off, you're going to have your auto jump enabled, right? You can leave this one on, but I usually turn jump power on and then I leave it on if I'm going to be using it for my game. Let's turn those little sparkles off so that when we, when we get our little, uh, our ball, of course you could leave it there so you could test it. Anyway, let's just go ahead and disable that. It'll be real quick. You learn a little bit extra if you don't know. All right. So here on our part, remember we had sparkles, right? The particle emitters, right? We'll say uh, particles, and that is part dot particle emitter. Let's go down here. After we touch it, we're going to say particles dot enabled will be false, and then we'll go ahead and turn it on after our cooldown, right? And our can touch is now true. Let's make this true again. Particles are going to come back. And here we go. And our particles are gone. Perfect. All right. That's pretty good. Uh, that's a few things that you can get in your game. And now you're kind of understanding touched events a little bit better. So I will see you in the next video. Good luck with that.